floor. I start to say it's high time that we do not have to now start talking villages vis-a-vis -vis cities. And that is the reason why uh, this project of smart villages is very exciting that they have given to me. I was a little worried as to how does one talk about a smart village? What really would the parameters uh, for a village to become smart would work out to be? Yeah, thank you. That's better. So uh, what's important for us to understand is we need, we're all technologists here or service providers here. And therefore, for me, my technology or my product does not uh, differentiate between a villager or a s urban uh, citizen. How will that be possible? I will have to thank uh, Vikram for uh, giving such a uh, complete um, remark, uh, opening remark. He has touched upon all the issues that this country faces when it talks about technology intervention in the lives of its citizens. So he's touched upon, uh, the first I'll start from the other way around. So the first issue that is important to his heart and to most of us is, yes, language is a barrier. Technology is, does not really um, you know, offer any barriers, it is for one and all. But somewhere, the way we communicate the language may sometimes become a barrier. Fortunately for us, almost a decade back, when we started to look at uh, our presence on the cyber world, we realized we needed tools, we needed resources, we needed uh, machine translations, we needed all of this. And the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has its uh, research arm in Center for Development of Advanced Computing. And that's where we had a complete program of technology development for Indian languages. Today, the country has all the necessary tools and resources for bringing its, its scripts and language onto the cyber world. Two, we were also fortunate to be able to convince ICANN in 2007 that if you want to talk about an inclusive cyber world and when you talk about domain names, we need to include, we need to acknowledge that India representation of Indian citizens is in 22 languages, at least 20 or two of those official ones. And we have 11 scripts, and we have the Indian ISC, ISCII, which is a very standard uh, format for representation of the Indian scripts. And we were able to, therefore, put all our variants of the linguistic requirements on the platform, and today, India has more than 14 out of the total 22, and we'll be closing the rest within uh, maybe another short term from now, where we will be having domain names in all the 22 languages. And of course, we have been uh, uh, a member of the Unicode, where we are able to put in a representation of all our scripts onto the digital medium. So that's a very important base that we already have covered to a large extent. There may be still be some gaps, but that's where the government of India has taken its step one. Two, we have been able to convince the need for our web presence or the various entities, institutions, be it government, be it uh, the private and the public sector, to be able to make their websites smart. It is very important that their first introduction to the public service is in a language and is in a content that is available for public at large to be able to access what is being made available to them. Most importantly, there's a differentiation between the villages not being literate in the uh, digital world. And if they're not literate, does it really uh, become a divider for us? Not really. What is possible is to provision the content in such a form that the very essence of the service is representable through different uh, symbols because that's still very easy to do. And so much of the content today that you will see is gradually transforming in its very presentation on the uh, digital medium. So it is becoming easier for our citizens to be able to access the services that are ICT enabled or through the, this technology medium because of this. The third is, yes, because India today has a, a good broadband, we are no more bound to putting everything in content form, uh, in, the, in the text form. And therefore, we are able to put in a lot of content in the multimedia forum, which again becomes easy for the citizens at large to be able to access the services. 
So there are many of these steps that have been taken. DOT, um, I should take the names of its uh, service providers also. They are the people who have reached out the connectivity to the rural hinterland, be it through the OFC cables or they're talking about every way um, to reach connectivity there. There are certain um, gaps yet, but that is very a minor problem where many of you partners out here are, are providing alternate solutions for connectivity. So uh, we had experimented as the government to look at the TV widespread, the UHF spectrum, because in the rural hinterland, not much of that spectrum is being fully utilized by our Doordarshan. So we were able to connect with them and convince them to allow us to use the uh, secondary usage of the spectrum that is not fully utilized by them when they're broadcasting their televisions. And in a, as soon as they fully transform to a digital format, much of that spectrum may be available for other users. So the, not that the government is not aware, but what's important is for all of us to understand that if these resources are available, how do we make full use of it? We really need to have a model where we are sharing these resources, which are national resources, between all the stakeholders. So we had brought out a report where we had shared, we had brought out a model of sharing of the spectrum, not just by the, not just for the ISM purposes, not for the scientific purposes, but also some of the spectrum being made available to, for purchase by the various service providers to provision their services in the rural hinterland. So all of this uh, has been happening. And off late, we have now started with this program of Digital Village. And why the Digital Village program was started with uh, by the ministry, that's an important question that I need to answer. So we have Ministry of Rural Development, we have Ministry of Ag Agriculture, Animal Husbandry and Fisheries. So we have a lot of these government uh, your, your ministries and departments who are all having their own national schemes and programs for rural development. And yet, there is still a gap. The gap is that these various ministries are reaching out through an administrative line of uh, reach, uh, through their block offices, to their, to their district offices, and they are having these um, centers, of, uh, uh, centers that are available at that level. However, they have not been able to directly engage with citizens in their comfort zone. And that's where the program that the Ministry of Electronics has started is to use its presence of common service centers within the villages by the villagers themselves. So it is one of them who's an entrepreneur, who's, who's a village level entrepreneur, who's been asked, who's been given support by the government by provisioning platform and other access services such that he's able to serve his own um, uh, you know, village friends. And what, what also is important is to bring in an ease of, uh, uh, you know, um, exposure to ICT for the public at large. And what happens is, is one of us, as a role model, is able to very conveniently convince our elders and our village folks, our women and children, to come and take those services. And that's where we uh, today have more than, more than three lakh common service centers and we hope to cover all of the country with it. But more importantly, the very presence of this common service center, the intent is to be able to reach out not just all the government uh, services, G2C services, but also the business to citizen services. We are also trying to now leverage upon the technology to reach out the gaps in education services that happen. Now what is really interestingly happening today is in these villages, many of the students who, who wanted to take up IES exams and other medical services, medical exams uh, and other exams are actually accessing that content through these uh, labs that we have set up in these villages. And that's where we've thought we've done an excellent uh, idea of bringing in these uh, uh, computer labs in these villages where we are, first of all, we're, and we're also adding the NILET basic courses, Triple C and the others, such that they're able to, you know, get the first exposure. What's happening is now many of the women folk who are, and the young girls who were barred from accessing information and much of these co courses 
today are doing it. The numbers are increasing. I do not have a number that I can give you today, but believe me, within three months to four months, I will have the exact numbers of the beneficiaries in terms of not just a gender uh, uh, coverage that we've been able to do, but also the other demographies. That's one. The second is the intent to bring them on board by themselves. So what we're trying to do is to skill them up right there and rightly uh, mentioned by Vikram that we need to bring much of the industry towards the villages. And so my idea was to somehow look at those aspects where we could, the villages could become the support to the smart, to the cities of their own. So the demands of the cities are covered, are being offered from the villages themselves. So we are also f trying to bring in a program where we build, where we support entrepreneurship and bring in SMEs to now start investing or start where they work in the villages.